Giuseppe, bucatini alla matriciana. Let's explain what that means. That, that's my favorite. Bucatini is a long pasta, a little bit thicker than a spaghetto. Mm -hmm. Alla matriciana is when you cook with tomato, guanciale, mm -hmm. and just some parmesan cheese. Peperoncino, of course, some okay. parmesan cheese or pecorino. Or pecorino. Okay. Like for the Grigia. And it's called Amatriciana after Amatrice, right? Yeah. The town Amatrice of Amatrice. Amatrice is a small town in Lazio. Yeah. Uh, when you drive up to uh, Rieti, mm -hmm. so it's in the north part of so Lazio. So in the province of in the uh, province. Rieti. Yes. Yes. Okay. So there's a lot of confusion about this simple dish because in many cookbooks and even in cooks that I know, they will add garlic and onion, and we don't add garlic can and I, onion in a true amatriciana, can, right? Can I, can I give you a secret? Sure, un uh, segreto uh, dello cetto, I'm, si. I'm, I'm sure you know. The less onion and garlic, yes, the, the better. better. Okay, water is boiling, Giuseppe. Great, so we have to... Let's put how in the... How much bucatini do you want? A <laughs> mezzo, mezzo. Mezzo? Si, mezzo, si. So the salt's in there, and now that's a thick... Is it the salt in here? Well, you can put more in if you want to. And while he's doing that, I am going to cut up some plum tomatoes. Plum tomatoes are the kind of tomato you want to use for a sauce, right? Because they're pulpy. Yes. And uh, so this wouldn't work with a beefsteak type tomato, which would be very watery and seedy. So plum tomatoes, for most sauces that have tomatoes, are San Marzano type or what we refer to as plum tomatoes. Now, have you been able to find good plum tomatoes while you've been living in the U.S.? Uh, do you want the... <laughs> I want the do absolute do, do, do truth. Do you want a diplomatic answer I or, or do you want the truth? truth? Yeah, I want the truth. And let's say vegetables here are slightly different from Italy. Uh-huh. Okay, in what way? Uh, less tasty. Uh-huh. Can I say? Yes. yes, you can. You can. But the colors are great, so yeah. I don't know what they... <laughs> what they do. Okay. What they do. All right, so basically... This recipe You know is the difficult part of bugadini? Yeah, it's hard. That, to that, that, that's you have to spend at least two minutes. Well, maybe if you put the top on, let that boil a little bit, it would, you, you know, the heat will stay in and it will be able to yeah, get it out. Yeah, but just to avoid that the... Okay, there is so... There's a part of the bugadini that is not cooked. All right, so put, put the cover on. Now come back over here. So we want to cook this, sure. the guanciale. So we put guanciale just with some olive oil. Yes. Extra virgin olive oil. Yes. Guanciale, you cook in, in small cubes. Mm-hmm. So we diced it, yes? You diced it, and now we are ready for... Are you ready for the tomatoes? Sure, absolutely. All right, so the plum tomatoes go in. So you can find... If you don't have plum tomatoes in your garden, and I grow a lot of Italian varieties of plum tomatoes in my own garden, but, but if, you don't, if you don't have a garden and you don't have access to the tomatoes from Italia, you can always get some good imported canned plum tomatoes, yeah. right? Absolutely. So when you cook at home here in Boston, you must have to use some ingredients that you wouldn't find in Italy, right? Like sure, canned but, plum but, tomatoes. But you, you, you can use the canned one. They're mm -hmm. very good. Okay. Should we turn the heat up on this? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Let's turn the heat up on that. And now you're going to add a little bit of the pepperoncino to yeah, that, right? Yeah. I add some, a little bit of salt. Okay. And then pepperoncino. Maybe we can wait a little bit. Okay. So add let, some more pepperoncino. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see where we are here because this is going to be enough to serve about four people. Giuseppe, I want you to check that now and see what you think here. I guess should be ready. Yeah. We did say bucatini is a pasta with a hole in the center. That's what bucatini mm. means. It's ready? Okay. Absolutely. All right, so it's ready. Let me turn this off. You don't want any water in this no, one, right? No, because there is already the juice of the tomato. Okay. You know how much I love cooking with you, Marianne? How much? That's great. <laughs> That's... I'm having fun. Okay, there. And do you ever add oil to the water when you're cooking pasta? But I, I normally don't. I've never seen anybody in Italy put oil in the water when they're cooking pasta. That's a new one on me. So, all right, so here we are. This there looks we are. good. Now what, cheese? A lot of cheese. All right, so here we have Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano, of Va course. Bene. And you know this period, buy a lot of Parmigiano Reggiano because you help a region that suffer from... So Emilia Romagna, that's where yes. Parmigiano comes from. Okay, we have a beautiful platter for you to put that out onto. That looks great. I think I'll add more cheese. Yeah, what more do you cheese. Think? More cheese? Yeah, okay. And that's a cow's milk cheese, we should tell people. Yeah. It's a DOP. DOP. Which means? Which means denominazione di origine protetta. protetta. Which means it comes from a designated area, can only be made in that region. So a protected zone of where it's made. A little bit more? Okay, yeah. I think you're ready. 
Do we go? We go, right on that platter. Beautiful. Eccolo. Wait, let me get, give you a fork so you can try that to make sure that it's up to your specifications. Okay, so try let's that. Let's see, let's see. See. So, without using a spoon. I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> I never use a soup spoon where I see people twirl. Bravo.